what is the policy? So the policy I've chosen to quickly evaluate and review is the Additional Learning Needs and Education Tribunal Act for Wales 2018. What is this act? So how would we define this? So in order to define it, we need to look at the policy itself and the policy from Welsh Government define the Additional Learning Needs and Tribunal Act for Wales 2018 as it makes provision for statutory framework for supporting children and young people with additional learning needs, ALN. This replaces existing legislation surrounding special educational needs and assessment of children and young people with learning difficulties or disabilities in post-16 education and training. The Act also continues the existence of the Special Educational Needs Tribunal for Wales, which provides children, their parents and young people the opportunity to appeal against decisions made by the local authority in relation to their and their children's additional learning needs. But it's now been renamed to the Educational Tribunal for Wales. So to get more information on this Act, you can go on the Gov website for Wales and type in Additional Learning Needs and Educational Tribunal Act for Wales 2018. So now we're going to evaluate this policy at government level. When did it come into place? It was passed by the National Assembly for Wales and received royal assent on the 24th of January 2018. What is the purpose of the Act? The purpose of the Act is the old model has been in place for more than 30 years and is no longer fit for purpose. Inquiries and reviews completed by the Education Inspectorates, such as ESTIN, the Audit uh, Office of Wales, and the National Assembly's former Education Lifelong Learning and Skills Committee, highlighted that the current system is far too complex, bewildering and adversarial. So they identified that a change needed to be made. Looking at some of the weaknesses of the old SEM policy, from research uh, gathered by the Welsh Government, they identified that there is an unclear divide between those requiring statements of SEN and those who do not. In addition, the ex uh, existing SEN code of practice is not always applied rigorously or interpreted differently by different local authorities, meaning children in different authorities were not receiving the same interventions or support as their peers. Also, the trust between parents and local authorities was completely lost. The ALNET Act is a new system that is in place to better support the educational needs of individuals with additional learning needs. There will be a single legislative system relating to the policy given to children and young people aged between 0 and 25 years of age who have additional learning needs. As a result, the transition of learners between schools and post-16 education will be improved to allow greater equity in terms of support and rights for this group of learners. Making reference to the ALMET policy, the government also feel that the Act creates a unified legislative framework to support all children of compulsory school age or below with additional learning needs and young people with additional learning needs in school or further education. Secondly, they feel the Act is an integrated collaborative process of assessment, planning and monitoring, which facilitates early, timely and effective interventions. And finally, it's fair and a transparent system for providing information and advice and for resolving concerns and appeals. So they feel that the system has never been better. In addition, the government state that for most people with additional learning needs who are looked after, the Act will also require their IDP to be incorporated into the personal education plans, also known as PEPs, made for these learners as part of their care and support plans, CSPs. This will eliminate duplication of effort and ensure that educational needs of children who are looked after are also considered in a holistic way. Evaluation of the policy at institutional level. All educational institutions need to implement and comply with the Additional Learning Needs and Educational Tribunal Act 2018. 
In order to do this, they need to rigor, uh, regularly assess how well the institution has implemented the key provisions of the Act. At ACT, the school has a rigorous self-evaluation as part of the school's improvement plan. Each educational institution is required to appoint an ALNCO, also known as an Additional Learning Needs Coordinator, to help coordinate the Additional Learning Needs ALN provision for students, ensuring their needs are identified and they have the correct support in place. In addition, they need to make sure that they're offering a universal learning provision to all students, and then additional learning provision, or an ALP, to those who require extra support. Additionally, the institution needs to make sure that all staff are upskilled and participate in regular CPD in order to make sure that the staff are aware of the Act and they know how to identify and support children with additional learning needs. Furthermore, they have the responsibility to make sure that there are adequate resources available to support the implementation of the Act. Not just day-to-day -day resources, but special equipment such as reading pens, overlays, hearing loops, and other assistive technology such as Chromebooks, which have immersive reader built into them. This will also help to include the correct number of staff uh, available to make sure that the provision is running the way it should be. For example, there is one-to-one -one support with each student who needs it. Institutions also need to make sure that they evaluate uh, their own compliance with timelines and requirements relating to identification, assessment and planning for those learners with additional learning needs. Before a student joins ACT, the outreach team will meet with the local authority to see if the student is suitable for our provision. And this is the opportunity for all information to be handed over about the child, including previous statements of special educational needs, if not already transitioned to the new ALN's IDP. This will help the school identify any potential additional learning needs. As a result of this, the ALN Co will complete baseline assessments for each student when they are enrolled. This is another opportunity to highlight any petition, uh, potential additional learning needs, as they may have been overlooked during previous education establishments. The local authority has granted ACT permission to notify them that a child or young person may have an additional learning need. This helps the school raise the awareness that the child may need extra support and apply for funding. As a result of this, the child may uh, be assessed and could end up with an IDP highlighting additional learning needs. They will then have the opportunity to get extra support such as a one-to-one. -one. The final expectation uh, placed on educational institutions is that they must review the processes for creating and updating IDPs, individual development plans for students with additional learning needs. So stated in the Act, uh, there is a 24 month rule. So this rule means that uh, provision must ensure that there is no child or young person can be subject to a statement of special educational needs or additional learning needs for longer than 24 months after the commencement of the Act. So this rule aims to promote regular and timely updates of IDPs. At ACT schools, we have annual reviews for our children who have additional learning needs. So this will be a collaborative uh, review between the local authority, the school, the parents and the students. And we will look to make sure that the IDP is still relevant and suitable for our students. I've been involved in these reviews and I have first-hand experience that they are very positive. It allows us to support the child in a holistic way. It's also important to complete these reviews regularly as the students may change uh, their, their needs from time to time and from when they were first assessed. In addition, this is a good opportunity for multi-agencies to be involved and they can also review the progress of how the IDP is supporting each student. Now I'm going to review how the Additional Learning Needs and Educational Tribunal Act for Wales 2018 
impacts teachers and how they plan, deliver and shape the learning provision. The ALNET policy or ACT has significant implications for how teachers plan, deliver and shape learning provision in Wales as it introduces a more inclusive and person-centred approach to addressing the needs of students with additional learning needs. So some of the ways that it impacts teachers are that teachers help to play a crucial role in identifying and assessing students with additional learning needs. The Act helps to emphasise early identification and teachers are expected to work closely with other pro professionals such as ALNCOs and parents to help identify these ALNs. The process involves ongoing assessment and a collaborative approach to understanding each student's specific learning needs. The Act also promotes uh, a more collaborative approach between teachers uh, working with their peers, other specialists, uh, parents and the students themselves. So the teachers are also encouraged to work with and uh, in partnership with other professionals such as educational psychologists to help ensure that students' additional learning needs are effectively met or addressed. Uh, this collaborative effort helps to shape the learning provision to meet the individual needs of the students and their requirements. Teachers are also required to continually review and ev evaluate the effectiveness of the support and the provision for students with additional learning needs. The Act helps to encourage ongoing monitoring of the process and making necessary adjustments to the IDPs to ensure that students receive appropriate and effective support as previously mentioned. In addition, teachers are expected to engage in CPD to better understand the new legal framework and the principles of the Act. As a, as a result, teachers will be more equipped with the knowledge and skills needed to provide the best support for students with additional learning needs. A positive from a teacher's point of view is that um, the app promotes uh, regular communication between parents, teachers and students. This is something that I like to do in my practice uh, in order to maintain good relationships with not just the students, but the parents. Students have a regular opportunity to review their learning pathway uh, in ACT as we have weekly reviews. So this is a chance for them to choose what sort of enrichment activities they would like to do. And they get a time to reflect on what worked well last week, what they're going to work on this week, and are there any concerns or any way that the school can help to support. So the final area of this act that I'll be reviewing in this vlog is how does the ALNET policy 2018 for Wales impact our students? So the ALNET policy offers inclusivity, allowing students to foster a sense of belonging and equality among their peers. Students will also get a person-centred approach to meet their specific learning needs. Additionally, students can get identified early which means they shouldn't develop any further gaps in their education and they can get support and uh, interventions from early on. Finally, just to summarise what we've discussed today, um, whilst evaluating and reviewing the ALNET 2018 policy for Wales, personally, I feel that the Act is positive as it offers more specialist support to students who need it. Due to the Act being statutory, students can no longer get overlooked and government, institution and teachers will have to take responsibility to make sure that the Act is implemented correctly. As it's everyone's responsibility to make sure that students with additional learning needs get the support they need. I do feel we're in the early stages of this Act becoming successful as it's taken a long time for institutions, teachers and other specialists to get to grip with how the Act is being rolled out. Some of the limitations that I'm finding at the moment are that it's still taking far too long for students to get diagnosed or notified as having additional learning needs. Another thing is the amount of time is taken once being accepted as having ALN 
for the support to be implemented. And this might be because people are still not taking responsibility for who's going to fund the extra support. Um, I know at ACT schools, we we have students who need additional support, so additional one-to-one -one support, and still there's arguments between who is going to fund it. Is it a local authority's responsibility? Is it a school's responsibility? You know, there's still some clarity that needs to be um, put in place and people need to own up and take responsibility for it.